just for fun, I thought I'd do a very quick video showing off the new Comsec uh, quotes page. I'll just type in a stock, which um, is the way that we used to always do it. So I'll pick on Afterpay because it's one that I hold, um, one that a few people think might be changing direction. So this is the new screen that you'll see when you first log in. I'll go to the summary page. Um, this will hopefully be the first one you see when you log in. It does seem to save whichever page that you were on last. So you can see very quickly it says here that um, you know Chi X data is now being you know incorporated within the pages. Um, after pay touch, share information technology, software and services. So it tells you basically what sector and industry it's in, um, which is always good because then you can sometimes click on these and you know see other shares that are similar. I haven't I haven't tried that on this. Maybe I should information technology. No, so it just basically tells you you know how that particular sector is performing. So anyway, it tells you the bid, the size, the offer, the size, volume, trades, value. You can read all the things here on the screen. Um, it tells you where the market's you know open or closed. Um, not particularly interesting. It tells you down here the prices, um, the orders and the course of sales. So I, when I trade, I very regularly look at, um, you know, what the market depth is. I like to see, you know, how many buyers are looking at a share versus how many sellers are looking to sell a share. Um, I think that um, the price and the price on the buy and seller side, it's not quite as easy to see as in the old version. Maybe if there was some sort of shading just to distinguish that, you know, the price is probably the most important thing, you know, on this information. But I like to be able to see, you know, who's in the queue. If you click on orders, um, you can see, again, what's been going through. Course of sales. Same deal. You can see what's been happening, um, you know, as it's been occurring. I don't really use these two screens much. It's interesting to download a CSV of it. I don't know why you would, but some people might like it. Below that, it has a little bit of information on the right-hand side where you can see, you know, the performance over a year, you know, nice sort of steady upward tick for the um, um, afterpay share, which is good. You can change the time period, whether you want it weekly, monthly, uh, that sort of a view. You can change it down to a three-month view. So, again, it's just sort of handy to be able to have a very quick look at, you know, how the stock is performing, just a very quick summary snapshot. Um, tells a little bit of information down here. You know, APT appears to be in a strong bullish trend confirmed by multiple indicators. Um, sometime it's worth reading, um, depending if you're a TA trader or if you're a fundamental trader. I, I am a very heavily weighted uh, TA trader. You know, technical analysis is what I look at. Um, recommendations, you can sort of see what some of the, you know, bigger houses are suggesting for the share. Again, there's a little bit of snapshot data. Market caps for bill. Um, PE ratio doesn't have it. Um, some of the fundamental type data through here. Um, I always do like having a quick look at the summary. I'd probably prefer that if, if this was a little bit higher on the on the page because I do like to you know always have a read you know what the company is and what it does that I'm looking at. So that's just a very quick uh, overview of the summary page. If I then go to announcements, um, again you know before I buy a share I'll dive in you know even though I'd, I'd look at TA. I'll look at technical indicators. I'll, tip, I'll typically have a quick look just to see if there's any news that's come through um, that might disrupt, um, you know, the patterns on the charts. I quite like here how it says that you can see the news. Um, the, the little blue dots means it's not price sensitive. If I maybe have a look at a, a longer period of time. So you can see how the little yellow ones pop up that's market sensitive. Again, you can click on those and That'll take you to a PDF document that then shows you what's happening with that particular um, news announcement. I'll, I'll have a quick click on charting, but I'll cover this more in detail a little bit later in the video. Um, you can see you get a very basic chart there, but this is a good little tool. Like It's, it's increasingly powerful um, over the old version, and I, and I do quite like it. Dividends. Um, if you're looking for income, you know, you might like to look at dividends, you know, after pay off. Of course, I don't think has any, but again, dividends isn't something that I look at. I tend to go for my, um, um, you know, growth out of my increase in the share price. Recommendations. Again, just seeing what some of these bigger houses 
recommend, you know, with particular shares. You can see, you know, when they change some of their targets and bits and pieces, which is kind of interesting if you're into that sort of thing. Bit of analyst research. Again, some, you know, financial information that, you know, could be good for some people. About, it tells a little bit more information about the company. It's the same sort of summary as on the homepage. I do like that you can, you know, click through the website and, you know, a few little bits and pieces like that if you need to, you know, have a bit, bit deeper of an explore. Director's interests. Tells you a little bit about who's behind the company. I'd like it if, if, a, if a director, um, let's say, had a history with other businesses or, you know, multiple companies, it'd be nice to know a bit more about the directors, you know, where there was a hyperlink to say, you know, this person's also on two or three other boards perhaps would could be interesting. Um, you know, you might better than track performance by directors over time. could be an interesting way of doing it, I guess, just to see the history of where they may or may not have been. Um, current and previous directors. So, again, just tells you a little bit about who was behind the company. Um, little mouse over now gives you a little profile of that person, um, which, again, I, I think is, you know, kind of interesting, not not for how I trade, but I know that my father, who, you know, likes trading more on fundamentals, certainly, you know, is interested in, you know, who's on boards and things and what their credentials are. Um, and shareholders, you know, sort of gives you an indication of, you know, what different people might hold. Um, within you know these individual companies, forecasts and trends. Again, just sort of shows you you know probably on the bigger companies you'll get you know BHP and whatever else you'll get better data. Um, Afterpay is obviously one of these sort of more spec speculative type stocks, even though they are growing quite well and you know are a bit of a market darling at the moment. Trade history again a little bit of a repeat of what we saw previously. You know, highs, lows, closes, changes, you know, over the different days. Um, again, it looks like you can download it if you're maybe importing some of this data into, you know, different trading programs or into Excel if you like tracking things through Excel. Financials. Again, I don't tend to look too much at financials, but I do like to know, you know, if they've got, you know, sales. You know, it's always good to invest in companies, you know, that have got, you know, decent sales, decent cash flow. Um, in this case, you know, it's, it's super speculative, so it doesn't. Um, I like looking at things like EBITDA um, every now and again to for some of the, the bigger stocks. But, you know, you've got all your you know, return on equity type things, and you know, I'm sure there's PEs in here, but this one doesn't have a PE. But, again, people like to see PEs. Historical financials. It doesn't seem to be any. Balance sheet. A lot of debt. Again, that's the sort of nature of the business that it is. Performance and risk. Um, again, you know, probably not enough data to really make much of a decision around. And derivatives, if you're into derivatives, nothing in there. So the main thing that I really did want to have a look at is the charting, because that's, you know, quite, you know, the thing that I like the most. So you can see here, it's a very, very basic chart. Um, what I can do is I can change it from a line chart to an area to open high, low, close, um, high, low, close, candlesticks, line, bar, and dot. And so we'll go back to, say, um, candlesticks, just because that's what most people like having a look at. Um, and you can see there's a little blue line that's going through here. And it took me a little while to realize you know, where that was hidden. And so if you click on this little arrow next to APT, you can see it's a simple moving average. And so you can change that, you know, color, thickness, whatever you like, but we'll keep it as a, as a, what I might do though, um, yeah, we'll keep it as a 20 day simple moving average, but you can do things on this site now where you can add in say dividends, no, there's no dividends, of course, on this stock, silly me. Um, you can add in things like announcements. And so I'd prefer it if you could have an option when you add announcements, whether you could just do, um, where you could just do things like, um, um, price sensitive, 
or just general announcements. So at the moment, it just throws everything on there, whereas I'd much prefer just the price-sensitive announcements with the yellow bell. But you can see if you mouse over any of them, you can click on that and, again, it'll take you to the PDF document where you can read you know, more about what that announcement was. So I'll turn that off for now. Um, I'll get rid of the dividends ones for now. Um, you know, you've got some of the things like, you know, Goldman Sachs. Again, this probably stock isn't covered, but um, it will have things where uh, announcements and target price, get rid of them. You can see down here, you know, there's a buy recommendation that came through, you know, that particular point. So some of that stuff is, you know, kind of interesting. Morningstar, I don't think, covers the stock. Oh, no, take that back. It does. Um, you can see they basically think it's a combination of overvalued, fairly valued. Um, and again, that's kind of interesting. So let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that. Um, I can do things where I can go to my indicators. Um, you've got fundamental momentum, trend, and volume. Um, you've got upper indicators, lower indicators, which is basically a combination of some of these other ones. It just depends how you like putting your things together. Or you can click on all indicators and you know gradually add them all in. Um, dividend yields, historical dividend. Momentum is things like the average true range, which I use a lot to set my stop losses. Uh, awesome oscillator, Bollinger Band, Bollinger Band. Um, width, faster test, stochastics, MACD, mass index, momentum. So there's a whole bunch of indicators through there for momentum indicators. Um, trend indicators, which again, I use a lot of things like, you know, the um, ADX, you know, directional movement index, exponential moving averages, linear regression, moving averages, price channel, simple moving averages, which I, again, quite like. Um, time series forecast, weighted moving averages. I can go to volume. Um, you can see things like accumulation, distribution. Um, I use the main one that I use is, you know, on balance volume, volume, volume by price. Um, and so those are the main sort of indicators that you might, you know, want to select from. So I'll go and I'll plug some in. So if I go back to momentum, I like the average true range. I think when I add them in, I think it adds them in the value. I think it adds them in the order of what I've added them. So um, I've got volume down here. And so the thing I like to see after volume um, is probably the relative strength index, just so I can see if it's at a at a fair value. Um, so you can see the RSI has been added. I like to see um, the on balance volume, just so I can see. I think it's on the next thing, but uh, there's nothing there that I want. Um, I'll add in. And that's the trend. I'll go to volume and I'll add volume because I know that's one of the lower indicators. So on balance volume. And so that will add it in down here. Um, and there's things that I can do now where on volume I can add an overlay. So I like to have a, a simple moving average um, just so I can see if volume's above it or not. So again, you've got to click on this little hidden arrow, click on this. Um, I'd like to have a 30 period simple moving average. Um, and I tend to make all my lines, um, you know, a spike of stop, stop lights, stop sign or traffic light signal where it's, you know, green for good, orange for, you know, caution and red for bad. So I'm going to make the simple moving average um, red. So I'll click done. And then what I look for is I'm trying to buy stocks where the, you know, the volume is above that you know, simple moving average line. Um, I can go to the RSA, RSI rather. I can click on this one. I'm happy with the 14 day. I think technically a seven day one gives you better signals, but you know, 14 day is the most common one. So again, I can change it to a green line. Um, the on balance volume, I'll change that to green as well. Um, you know, remember green is good. And then what I'll do is I'll add an overlay on this one and I'll add a 30 day simple moving average. Then click on that one there, simple moving average, and I'll make him red, and I'll make it 30 days. And so again, what I'm looking for is stocks where the, um, you know, the 30, the, the basically the volume is, you know, moving above that 30 day MA. So you can see how it's fading away here, and you can see up here the stock is also fading away. Even you know the RSI is coming down. So you know I like to buy stocks when 
you know, the OBV is above the 30-day MA. You can see that through that period there where it's going up, you know, and, you know, I sort of get out of it when it's going down a bit. So, again, you'll never notice that those things were there unless you clicked on every link like I did earlier. Um, now, I'll go back to my indicator here, um, and I'll go to my trend, and I'll go to my um, simple moving averages, and I'll go indicator. You've got to add them in a couple of times, and it's good that you can add multiple ones. Trend. Simple moving average. And so I might change these just for fun to say, let's make it a 50 period. I tend to use like a, um, I'll use like a 20 period EMA um, just to keep a close eye on what the stock's doing. But, you know, the 50, 100 and 200 are, you know, fairly well used um, short term, medium term, long term indicators. So we'll make this one green. Good. So as long as the price is above the green one, that's a good thing. Um, simple moving average, 100. We'll make that one orange for, you know, warning. And then the bottom one will make a 200-day one, you know, for what's happening long term. I'll make that one red. And we'll click done. So you can see the stock is starting to, you know, break through some of those you know more important indicators um, which I don't, I don't know we've gone back a fair way so um, you can see it's actually trending well at the moment so I like it when these lines are starting to move further apart it's a it's a good sign that the stock is having a fairly bullish type run so we'll hide him um, you can do a whole bunch of stuff you can draw on the chart you can write on the chart you know we can add in um, I don't know what we'll do is we'll say it's called uh, after pay and we'll make it, I don't know, we'll make it, I don't know, green, aerial black. And make it a bit bigger if you want to be able to see it a bit better. We'll click done. Move it up here. Um, you can make these lines thicker and smaller. You saw in that thing earlier. You can add in things like, you know, trend lines, horizontal lines, um, rays. You know, as a trick, what I'll often do is I'll say, um, I bought this stock on, you know, January, you know, at roughly $15. And so I'll plug a ray in there. And so it means that um, I can sort of basically set what my original price was. Um, and when I bought it, and then I can see how the stock is performing against where I bought it. And that ray will just continue, you know, as the stock moves to the right, the ray just continues to move to the right as well. Um, I don't know if I can change the values on it. No, I can't. So another program I use. You know, you can make sure that your start and finish values are the same so that it's always, you know, going to be at the same um, level, I guess. You know, whereas if I did it, didn't do it carefully, see how it's sort of a bit further down the line here. So I've got it so it's sloping slightly up as opposed to truly flat, but that's just me not mucking around with it for too long. Um, there's different things down here, you know, if you like Fibonacci retracements, there's all that sort of stuff in there as well. Um, so there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do, but, you know, by the time you get your charts all set up how you want them, the most important thing is to basically click here, go save template and, you know, call it, you know, you know, my, um, you know, moving averages, moving averages, you know, one, two, three, whatever you want to call it, oh, averages. Oh, averages one, two, three, and click save. And then you can also load templates. You can save the actual individual charts. So that's just setting it up as a template. So template save as moving averages done. And if I want to save this, like I think it should be the sort of thing where it automatically saves them all, but I can go save chart and I can call this one APT. And so then I presume that you know I can load it again with all my Existing settings are still there. Click on done. Um, and the other thing that I quite like is I can click on this one here. Um, I can also show extended hours if I have a um, intraday type chart. So you can see here that it shows you, you know, what might be happening between 8:30 and you know 10 a.m. Um, in the morning when the stock opens. The other thing I like though is I can click on download image. Um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. 
and that will automatically download an image that I can then paste into Facebook or other sites. So that's a probably longer than what I hoped for, but it's a very quick overview of the new system. Um, I've only sort of been using it for about, I don't know, probably an hour before I did this video. Um, and I do quite like it. Like it's, uh, it's cleaner, it's more responsive than the previous one. It is easy to get to some of the data more quickly. Um, I think it's, I think it's going to be a good system. There's certainly things that I'd like to see them improve. Um, as I said, it does annoy me that the more of these indicators that I add down the bottom, um, it doesn't keep extending them. And you can see I've just gone back to this and it's already just deleted all my uh, chart changes that I had made. So if I didn't know that I had to, you know, save and load my charts, um, it would have been very frustrating thinking that I've just lost everything that I've, you know, put onto that chart. Um, so again, just a bit of feedback for Comsec to, you know, have it auto save or do something because it'd be frustrating to accidentally click away, come back to it, not have any of your good work. Anyway, I hope that was um, useful and it went through very quickly, but it might give people a very quick overview of what the new ComSec um, quotes and research pages now look like.